Hi, I'm Julie um, and I am back with another um, episode in our short series um, helping transition into distance learning um, with ideas on how you can uh, use our resources um, and others uh, to move into and um, have success with your remote learning uh, classes. So I'm outside today and it is very windy um, and cold here in Maine. Um, but I'm outside because today I wanna talk about uh, using woo, <laughs> our weather cards. Um, so I these are a little bit smaller than uh, my normal set, but I have my regular cards at school. Uh, and they are in a poster size, which you can print these out on 11 by 17 uh, paper so that each of these is uh, probably about twice this size um, when you're using um, the bulletin board set. Um, but unfortunately, I left that back in my classroom and I haven't been, had a chance to go back and get them. So I printed them out again uh, and in order to make them fit uh, on the 8 by 11 and a half, they came out a little bit smaller, but I think that's okay. So I wanted to share with you some ideas on how you can use these cards um, for little simple, quick little activities uh, with your students. And I will say that one of the things that I'm definitely finding and I'm hearing from other teachers as well uh, is, is that uh, shorter tends to be better and uh, sometimes even just um, popping uh, short little videos to our students that may not, um, that are recorded instead of live can be really effective, especially if you have a platform to be able to share those. Um, that's something that's been really, um, I think, successful for me um, with uploading uh, really just, um, you know, videos that last maybe one or two minutes at the most, some of them even just 30 seconds, uh, but a, a way to connect with students on just, um, with some simple uh, prompts or even just a simple greeting, something like that. So um, with weather cards, as you can see, uh, today is actually a perfect opportunity because there's three different really um, potential um, or four um, potential weather phrases that uh, we could talk about. But so here are a couple of ideas how you can use the cards. And certainly um, I think one of the themes that you're noticing uh, running through is that um, our resources are really great um, in the classroom as visuals and also uh, in this distance learning environment. So for example, I could do a really simple set of very, very short videos of myself um, outside and I can ask my students those really basic questions, right? So if we have novice students, I could say something like, um, you have you say you know hello it's senora you know hola soy senora uh, and then you could ask a really quick question you could point around you could ask the question what is the weather and then use the visuals to give two choices right and either or um, we know that with novice speakers this is a really great um, way to support and scaffold our students with vocabulary uh, in this instance obviously windy is the choice um, if you were doing this in a pre-recorded you just really quick and then they just respond right if you were um, you could also do this live you could be outside you know zooming for example live and have them answer um, either verbally or on uh, like a whiteboard uh, if you're able to use your zoom whiteboard uh, or they could just hold up um, their answer and you could make a series of these right so you could um, um, have multiple multiple sets um, oh, I'm trying to look for it there we go um, you know you could ask uh, so right now you know you could kind of look in the sky right and you could say is it snowing or is it partly cloudy right so you can make these really short 20 second 30 second videos with them so they could see the two you can point to the weather phenomenon a really really easy way to make a, a series of very short videos that they can then respond to either in writing to you um, again if you're live they could do that um, verbally uh, another way to do this if you don't feel comfortable and I know some people aren't feeling super comfortable making videos of themselves talking you could just um, do the same thing but just take a photograph of yourself right so hold up 
take a photograph of yourself with the two, and then give the prompt in writing. Uh, one thing that I'm also finding uh, really, really useful for those of you who use Seesaw um, is to post pictures like that, but then there's an, um, when you upload a photograph, for example, um, or any activity, you can do um, um, a recorded caption. So you can do a recording of the question as well as a written prompt, which is great. So if you don't feel comfortable being in the video, but you do feel comfortable um, recording your voice, uh, you can do it that way, which is really neat. Um, so those are two ways that are really, really, really simple. Um, you can also use the cards as, again, as visuals, right? Um, but you can ask again, you know, what is the weather? But you point to something that you're looking for specifically, right? So in this instance, I might point to the cloud, right? Can you see this is like, I'm not doing a really good job. <laughs> there we go, right? This is the cloud and I can talk about the cloud, right? And I can then use the card that goes with it, okay, for the cloud. And I can say, oh, it's a cloud. It's cloudy out, right? Um, what color is the cloud? If you're live, this becomes a great way to extend the conversation. What color is the cloud? Is the cloud big? Is the cloud small? Um, is it sunny out? You know, uh, so now you're saying this is just a yes or no question, which is really great even before those either ors. I should have done this in the opposite order, sorry. Um, but that idea of is it sunny out, yes or no, and they can look around and see uh, the weather behind you and then answer appropriately. So those are two very, very simple ways um, to use the um, our weather cards um, with many of many videos or even like I said those static photos and of course obviously in your live um, lessons if you wanted to do that as well um, I know we're trying to uh, reinforce that vocabulary that our kids already know um, so looking for ways that we can do that in, in simple and fun ways is really good um, so one last um, thought that I had around um, weather which I really love is so if you've done uh, this activity a couple of different times and you know that your kids feel really comfortable with the vocabulary um, what you can also ask them to do and I have this referenced in my blog post on um, offline uh, activities is to have them keep a weather journal so uh, they could just do that on any piece of paper and they just track the weather and you could tell them uh, for perhaps for like five days or seven days just track the weather each day in your weather journal uh, they could fold the paper into six or seven pieces or they could divide it um, they can do however they would like to and then they can um, illustrate and write uh, what the weather is for that day and have that tracked for the week. You can then, if you are, um, you can either have them share the journal with you, share the journal with the class, um, or if you're in live, obviously you can have them share the journal and then you can go back with the visuals and connect back to their weather journals um, what they have said. Um, you could keep one yourself, which would be really neat so that I, I always like to, um, whatever activities my kids are doing, I really like to do those too. Um, so that I have something to share and I'm part of that interaction, not just the one who's facilitating it. Um, so that would be another fun way um, for kids to um, interact with the weather and practice those um, that weather vocabulary. So now the sun has come out so beautifully, um, which is just wonderful, I'm happy about that. And I am going to um, say, um, see you next time. I hope that these ideas have been helpful. Bye.